Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. We're going to begin in Israel with Israeli defense forces surrounding Gaza City ahead of an expected push into the Gaza stronghold. Israeli leaders are rejecting calls for a ceasefire as long as Hamas holds its hostages. Amid the fighting and the growing tide of anti-Semitism, the Israeli government has issued a warning to its citizens around the world. Avoid unnecessary travel and don't openly identify as Jewish or Israeli. Israeli forces have surrounded Gaza City by attacking Hamas from the air, land and sea. Meanwhile, as some international calls continue for a ceasefire, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told a group of pilots of Israel's intention. I also want you to know that there is one thing we will not do. There will be no ceasefire without the return of the hostages. This should be completely removed from the lexicon. We say this to our friends and to our enemies. We will simply continue until we defeat them. Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Herzog told CBS Face the Nation on Sunday a potential humanitarian pause would only be considered with the release of hostages. People talk about a pause in the, in the fighting. We are all for a pause that would allow for the release of hostages. Unfortunately, oh. unfortunately, I'll explain the humanitarian issue, but unfortunately, we, it is not our impression that Hamas is serious about releasing them. They are playing full time. They're trying to stop uh, our pressure and rearm and regroup themselves. Sunday, the IDF chief spokesman provided further evidence Hamas uses hospitals as cover for their war machine. This video shows a tunnel entrance under the Sheikh Hamad or Qatari hospital. Hamas is hiding behind hospitals. Hamas is sickly exploiting hospitals to disguise its war machine. Our war is with Hamas, not with the civilians of Gaza. We will not accept Hamas' cynical use of hospital to hide their terror infrastructure. Israel also showed its efforts attempting to warn civilians and get them out of harm's way. This phone call from last week urged Gazans near the Jabalia camp to go south, and more than one million pamphlets released warned Palestinians to flee to safety. The New York Times also reports evacuation efforts out of Gaza being hampered by Hamas, putting wounded fighters on departure lists among foreigners trying to cross into Egypt. In the meantime, pro-Hamas rallies continue in major cities worldwide, including Washington, D.C., with protesters at the entrance to the White House. Due to the alarming rise in anti-Semitic violence, Israel issued an unprecedented global warning. The National Security Council is urging all Israelis to consider whether any foreign travel anywhere in the world is necessary at this dangerous moment. We are also asking citizens, and truly I cannot believe that we are doing this, we are asking all citizens to avoid displaying any outward signs of their Israeli or Jewish identity when traveling anywhere in the world. Hatred of the Jews is so common that a word has been coined to describe it. It is called anti-Semitism, a term recognized worldwide. But was hatred of the Jews actually foretold in the Bible? Yes. According to the prophet Jeremiah, God said, And I will pursue them with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence. And I will deliver them to trouble among all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse, 
an astonishment, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. Deuteronomy 28.37 And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations where the Lord will drive you. Astonishment is the Hebrew word shema, which means ruin. By implication, consternation. Consternation means amazement or dismay that hinders or throws into confusion. Why did the Jewish people become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations? Jeremiah 29.19 Because they have not heeded my words, says the Lord, which I sent to them by my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them, neither would you heed, says the Lord. Because the Jews' ancestors disregarded God and refused to obey Him, they faced a great tribulation of hostility and persecution lasting many centuries. Is there a lesson in this for the rest of us? Yes. The Apostle Paul wrote concerning the severity of God in punishing his chosen people. Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell, severity, but toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. Romans 11.22 The Christian church is doing the same thing that God warned the Jews about in Jeremiah 29.19. Because they have not heeded my words, says the Lord, which I sent to them by my servants the prophets rising up early and sending them. Neither would you heed, says the Lord. Why anti-Semitism now? God is using anti-Semitism to bring the Jews back to Israel, fulfilling his prophetic word. Ezekiel 37, 21-22 Then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. Hosea 3.5 Afterward the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Did Christians replace Jews as God's chosen people? No, God did not replace the Jews with Christians as his chosen people. This lie is called replacement theology. Replacement theology is the teaching that the Christian church has replaced national Israel regarding the plan, purpose, and promises of God. Genesis 13, 14-17 And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever, and I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Romans 11.29 For the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Why this great deception within the church? It's a supernatural phenomenon. Ephesians 6.12 For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan hates the Jews with a passion. He hates them because God provided both the Bible and the Messiah through them. He hates them because God called them to be his chosen people. He hates them because God has promised to save a remnant of them. He hates them because God loves them. Satan works overtime to plant seeds of hatred in people's hearts toward the Jews. He is determined to destroy every Jew on planet Earth so that God cannot keep his promise to save a great remnant. He tried to annihilate them in the Holocaust. He failed. He will try to destroy them once again during the last half of the tribulation. He will fail again. Replacement theology is an abomination. It is unbiblical and it has resulted in virulent anti-Semitism that has in turn resulted in the deaths of millions of Jews. If you are a Christian and replacement theology is true and God is done with the Jew, what makes you think he isn't through with me and you? When God makes a promise, he cannot lie. So we know the promises he made to the Jews and to the Christian church will be fulfilled. Titus 1, 1 and 2 Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Hebrews 6, 17-18 Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. There is no reason for the church to be covetous of the promises that God has made to the Jewish people. He has also made some glorious promises to the church, one of which is the rapture. 
Additionally, we have been promised that we will reign with him over all the nations of the world during his millennial kingdom. And we have been promised that we will live with him eternally on a new earth, in a new Jerusalem, in new glorified bodies. It is no wonder that Paul wrote, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has the mind of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. The coming seven-year tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation, in which the Jewish people will look on me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him, as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. They will receive Yeshua as their Messiah. They will cry out, Baruch, Abba, Basham, Edne. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a glorious day that will be. What glory it will bring to the name of God. Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one third shall be left in it. I will bring the one third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them, and I will say, This is my people, and each one will say, The Lord is my God. Up north, the IDF and Hezbollah are engaged in the heaviest fighting since the 2006 Second Lebanon War. On Friday, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah neglected to enter the conflict in a major way, announcing instead that consistent attacks would continue along Israel's northern border. The reality on the northern border of Israel today is an unbearable reality. It's a reality that Israel will not be able to accept for a long time. Israel will not be able to accept a situation that 60,000 people that were evacuated from their homes will not be able to go back. Regional security analyst Sari Zahavi, founder of the Alma Educational Center, says Nasrallah is keeping options open. I think that the bottom line is that once uh, we are done with Gaza and once uh, the campaign in the south uh, will stabilize, I'm not even saying completely end, will stabilize, Israel will have to find a way uh, to deal with Hezbollah. And Asrana knows that. And that's why he talked about the option of uh, expansion of the war as very realistic. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. In a further warning to Hezbollah and Iran, the U.S. has dispatched a nuclear submarine to the Middle East. The arrival of the Ohio-class sub comes amid a spike in deadly cross-border exchanges on the Lebanese border and continuing uncertainty over whether Hezbollah and Iran opened a second front in the war. The U.S. Central Command said an Ohio-class submarine has been deployed to the Middle East. It's nuclear-powered and carries nuclear warheads. The sub is reportedly in the Suez Canal in Egypt. Its arrival in the region, part of Washington's strategy after October 7th, that began with arms shipments from the U.S., followed by the deployment of two carrier strike groups to deter Iran and its Hezbollah proxy from attacking Israel. Meanwhile, there has been a spike in the deadly crossfire border exchanges with Hezbollah on the Lebanese border. An Israeli civilian was killed near Kibbutz Yiftach on the northern border when he was hit by an anti-tank guided missile fired by the Lebanese terrorists. The largely evacuated city of Kiryat Shmona was targeted by several salvos from Hezbollah rocket fire. Rocket fire destroyed a home and a car and other property but caused no injuries. The IDF responded by striking the source of the missile fire and attacking terrorist positions in South Lebanon. The IDF has pounded Hezbollah for the past three weeks in the deadly crossfire exchanges. 56 Hezbollah terrorists have been killed in Israeli reprisals. For now, Israel remains in a defensive posture, but that could change. <laughs> Visiting the northern border, IDF Chief of Staff Herzi Alevi said the military was ready at any moment to go on the offensive in the north.
At least eight people have been injured after Russian missiles struck the Ukrainian city of Odessa late Sunday. Kiev says there were four missiles and nearly a dozen drones, damaging a 124-year-old historic art museum as well as several high-rise buildings. Drones shot down over Odessa damaged warehouses, special unloading equipment and vehicles carrying grain. This as Ukraine opens a criminal investigation into a Russian attack on Friday, which killed 20 soldiers during a medal awarding ceremony in Zaporizhia. In the Bakhmut district, Russia claims to have destroyed military equipment and camouflaged command posts of Ukrainian forces, while Ukrainian cruise missiles damaged a warship docked in the occupied Crimean Peninsula. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. The unfolding humanitarian crisis in Nepal as rescuers there are desperately trying to save victims of a strong earthquake. The death toll is more than 150 and it's likely to rise. ABC's Lama Hassan joins us now with the latest on that. That's right. Dozens of aftershocks have also been reported in the area with thousands of residents spending the night in the open in freezing temperatures, too scared to sleep indoors. But amid the devastation, there are some glimmers of hope. This is the dramatic moment a woman was pulled out alive in the aftermath of the devastating earthquake in Nepal. It's a race against time. Rescuers launching a massive operation, rushing to reach anyone still trapped beneath the rubble. <coughs> Thousands sleeping in the freezing cold. The earthquake devastating with a magnitude of 5.6, hitting the Himalayan nation just before midnight on Friday night. Many were still sleeping. At least 157 people are now dead and more than 150 others injured so far. And with landslides, homes collapsing and communications lost to many villages, the fear is the death toll will rise. The quake so powerful, tremors were felt as far away as India's capital New Delhi, some 500 miles away. The nights are cold in Nepal's Rukum district, but these people have no choice but to sleep here and wait for help. After a powerful earthquake destroyed their homes, they only have blankets and a small fire to keep them warm. Our village has been totally destroyed. We don't have anything left to eat. Whatever food we had is buried under the rubble of our fallen houses. She says they are surviving by eating rice and salt. Most houses in this area were damaged or destroyed in Friday's earthquake. The government should help us as our houses and everything has been lost. <laughs> Authorities estimate at least 200 people were injured when the earthquake struck in the middle of the night. I was sleeping on the top floor. The middle floors totally collapsed and I was thrown. I thought I would die for sure, but here I am. I survived. Earthquakes are common in Nepal, but this is the worst to hit since 2015. <laughs> Officials are still trying to find survivors or the dead in destroyed homes. <laughs> Cremations are underway. I found that my daughter, my son-in-law and grandson had died. It took us two hours to take their bodies out and bring them here. Many people here now face immense difficulties, unsure of what they will eat or where they will sleep. And the most difficult challenge, saying goodbye to their loved ones. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. 
This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Been asking police for weeks if they have any updates about the shooting death of 21 year old Marcel Wagner. You can see a memorial here to him at the bus stop where this happened today. The teen accused of shooting him was charged with first degree murder and prosecutors say there was no interaction at all before the shooting. This is 17 year old Miguel Rivera Dominguez, who police say fired a gun seven times on board this King County Metro bus on October 3rd in what prosecutors now describe as a senseless execution of a total stranger. It makes my heart sink and it scares me. The shooting on board the bus happened during the evening commute. Court filings say Rivera boarded the bus in Burien and rode for 12 minutes before he stood up, went to the back of the bus and shot the victim, Marcel Wagner, five times. Police say it appeared Wagner was asleep when he was shot. You're sleeping on the bus and you get shot and killed execution style. Police say Rivera then demanded to be let off the bus and fired two more times through a door. The charges say he ran off and still hasn't been apprehended. Safety on the bus is definitely an issue. We need more bus security. The shooting has rattled transit riders who were already concerned after a stabbing and a hammer attack at a train station just days before. You got people doing fentanyl and God only knows what else, robbing people for their sneakers. And it goes on and on and on. With all the problems with like the drug use, the fentanyl and everything, and now we got this kind of stuff happening. As detectives continue to search for Rivera, passengers who depend on the bus say they're uneasy. Riding the bus um, now for me is forever changed. This morning, authorities deepening their investigation into a former nurse already facing charges of murder of two patients and now accused in the deaths of more than a dozen others. She intentionally and maliciously injected them with insulin to kill them. Investigators say Heather Presti has confessed to attempting to kill 19 people at five different Pennsylvania care facilities as recently as this year. 17 of them dying, including 68-year-old Marianne Bauer. The family, quite frankly, is sickened. Officials say Presti's victims were 43 to 104 years old. The criminal complaint alleging she would administer lethal doses of insulin during the night shift when staffing was lowest. And if she sensed a victim would pull through, she'd take additional measures to try to kill the victims, including administering a second dose of insulin. The Bible condemns murder repeatedly as a characteristic of a wicked society and places a person in danger of the judgment. As we read in Matthew 5.21, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. Tonight, a North Dakota woman accused of poisoning her long-term boyfriend with antifreeze as part of an alleged plot to inherit part of a $30 million fortune. According to an arrest affidavit, Ina Thea Knoyer told police 51-year-old Stephen Riley Jr. had been drinking all day and had heat stroke after he fell ill and lost consciousness on September 3rd. The affidavit says Knoyer's friends told police she had made comments about wanting to poison him before. And then an autopsy showed ethylene glycol in Riley's system, a key ingredient in antifreeze. According to the affidavit, friends say that Riley believed he was about to inherit $30 million and told them he was going to leave Knoyer, who believed she was owed part of the money because she had been with him for 10 years. There was a belief that if he wasn't in the picture, that she would be entitled to any settlement money uh, through that common law marriage. That kind of changed as the, the investigators informed her that we don't have common law marriage in North Dakota. Police also revealing there may have been no money after all. Yeah, everything that we have indicates that it, that, that settlement doesn't exist. There wasn't a, a long lost rich relative or any other type of settlement that would lead to $30 million going in the direction of, of the victim. This is just the latest case in a string of alleged poison plots. Connor Bowman, a former Mayo Clinic doctor, in court today on second-degree murder charges for the death of his wife, Betty Bowman. Prosecutors have accused him of poisoning her with a drug to treat gout in an alleged effort to claim $500,000 from a life insurance policy. I'm going to turn out a tech. And in Utah, Corey Richens awaiting trial for allegedly poisoning her husband with fentanyl for life insurance money before she wrote a children's book about grief. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. 
for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. This seemingly pleasant interaction quickly taking a sinister turn in San Jose, California. This woman, seen smiling and bowing on an elderly couple's ring camera, asks for permission to cut some flowers from the couple's garden. According to the couple's grandson, two women then distract the elderly man, while a third woman appears to go inside the home, her face clearly captured on camera. She disappears from view and begins to search the home, going door to door. Never seen them, no recognizable faces. Uh, so because all, all our doors ways were uh, broken into, so they took a look into every room, it seemed like. After finding the family safe, a struggle ensues. One of the suspects even pushing the elderly woman back as her accomplice leaves with the safe. <laughs> with more than $10,000 stashed inside, according to the couple's grandson. It's very outrageous that they would do in broad daylight and uh, to do with a smile on their faces, knowing that they're taking from, away from those who can't defend themselves. They struck again. We're now hearing from a third family who says they too were tricked by several women who robbed them of their family safe. The ruse they describe is the same one used in at least two other thefts this week. Two women in long dresses and a teenager bring in clothes for alteration. Watch as they distract the owner by luring her into the fitting room. Moments later, several other women appear and one slides into the back room. The ruse is almost always the same with the intent to distract with multiple individuals. In this case, the owner says the thieves ransacked the family home attached to the tailor shop. They made off with this large safe containing more than $100,000 worth of valuables. We're just heartbroken as our whole family. Like my parents are still losing sleep. The family did not want us to show their faces or reveal their names. They were robbed of their home. Retirement, um, retirement savings, um, just family heirlooms, jewelry that won't be covered by insurance. Police say this theft is similar to the others we've been reporting this week. The safe stolen from an elderly family by women in long dresses. The valuable jewelry taken from a family in Evergreen by women in long dresses accompanied by a man. All using distraction as their strategy while one or more sneak inside. Police are still working to link the three cases together. This specific crew we've isolated to know that they're from Romania. They're a Romani theft crew. They work in concert across the country working with the same goal either larceny, theft, burglary. We're just heartbroken and sad to see like what the Bay Area has come to. Yeah. It's not the Bay Area that we remember. Retail giant Target now scrapping plans to open up a new location in Philadelphia. In fact, they're shutting nine stores in big cities due to a rise in organized crime and theft. Last year alone, retailers lost nearly $90 billion to theft. And that number is projected to top $115 billion in the next few years. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, 
for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers, fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.